Aloha, shalom. So the energies feel super busy right now. It feels like everybody's getting ready for Thanksgiving or for all of the holidays this season. There's a storm coming where I am. So I feel everybody's just in this energy of preparing, preparing, preparing. And right now I just got the hit in the middle of everything that I'm preparing. Do the reading now. Do the activation reading right now. You guys know how it is. So here I am. And I'm ready. I'm ready. So new moon, Sagittarius. We're going to be stepping from Scorpio into Sag. Taking everything that we learned in those depths of our healing. And moving forward. Moving forward with everything that we learned, everything we just realized about ourselves and about our environment and about the way that we work in our environment, now we're ready to really move forward. So, go ahead and let go of those recurring thoughts that you've been having throughout the day, throughout the week, whatever energy you've been holding on to, just set it aside just for this moment, just for this activation reading. And so if you haven't been able to set it aside, just think of all the lovely people that are tuning in right now. Aloha. And do it for them. Do it for us. Do it for the one. Just set it down just for a moment. And then once you set it down and you feel clear, go ahead and meet me in that space, that place outside of time and space, inside the heart, where we meet. And then when you're there, go ahead and connect to the deck however you know how. Use your imagination. You can send a golden thread from your third eye or from your heart to the deck, a rainbow thread, whatever you want to do. You can see in your mind's eye yourself shrinking and jumping into the deck like it's a portal. Whatever you want to do. Okay? Thank you, Archetypes, Faces of the One, in advance for showing us what it is we're really needing to see right now. For giving us some clarity, offering us some guidance as we move into Sagittarius season, as we begin this new cycle, this new moon being just a reflection of a much bigger new beginning, a new cycle that we're stepping into individually and collectively. So what is something that we really gathered and cultivated during Scorpio season and we're now ready to close up and let go. That'll also be the platform from which we move now. The foundation from which we move forward. What is the current challenge as we step into this new cycle? Who is going to be our ally as we move through this challenge and beyond? Ooh, I'm getting like a hidden fear. Okay. Okay. So, this is what we're leaving behind. This is what we've been cultivating during Scorpio season. And what we're ready to move away from now. But of course, it is our foundation. So it's the stepping stone, okay? It's, it's what is going to allow us to move forward. So while we're closing it up, if we didn't go through this, we wouldn't be able to move forward. And this is the Six of Wands. And this is the card of victory. And because it's wands, it's fire, it's spirit. So this is about true victory and success. Which is only sustainable when we don't cut corners and when we make sure we arrive at this success by walking the virtuous path, by way of the virtuous path. There's a man in the corner, it's hard to see, but he's looking up at, at the dude, all successful, like, hmm, I'm going to take him, I'm going to kick him off that horse, I'm going to take that success from him. And what he represents is the karma coming back to bite us in the ass. Something that we did that wasn't virtuous, a corner that we cut to get to that victory. So th these are the lessons that we learned and that we're ready to close up now. And I deeply resonate with this. So for example, a lot of what we have faced during Scorpio season was our shadow, our darkness, our depths, and what that revealed to us ultimately was 
those ways in which we have been cutting corners. It revealed to us those successes that we had achieved maybe weren't as sustainable as we thought because we didn't quite get there in the best way possible because we didn't quite get there in the most virtuous way. And so now we're learning that it's time to really make ourselves clear on the fact that we must walk that virtuous path. We can't dwell on, you know, all of these these thoughts of, oh wow, I thought that um I thought that I did this the right way, but I didn't, and oh shame on me or poor me. No, it's like, okay, well I thought I got here in the right way and I thought this success was going to be sustainable and I see that maybe I could have done things a little better. I could have been a little bit of a better person. I could have been more kind. I could have been more patient. Um, I could have tried harder. And that's okay. And this is all so that as I move forward now, I will give it my best. I will be as virtuous as I can possibly be. I will be impeccable with my word. I will not cut corners. And so, yeah, we've had to face those ways in which we weren't, uh, weren't so righteous, weren't so true. But that's all so that now we can be. Current challenge. Wheel of Fortune. Boom. First major arcana of the reading. Right in the center. So the challenge being the wheel is telling me that we are stepping into a new cycle and we have been, especially with Scorpio, diving into the depths so that we could rise up to our highest height. That's transformation. That is the offering of a new cycle. Rebirth, the wheel. That is Scorpio. So it makes sense that this would be the challenge as we move from Scorpio to Sagittarius, accepting that this is a whole new stage in our lives. Whether or not the details of our lives look the same doesn't matter. What's beneath the surface, what's below the surface, that's what really matters. Transformation isn't always what meets the eye. So it's about really embracing the fact that we are absolutely stepping into a new cycle. We have the ability to take advantage of this energy, to ride this wave and say, yeah, I want this. I want to be reborn. Because even in the simplest of ways, it can be so profound. It could be like changing your hair color, cutting your hair. Or it could be like moving to another state. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Again, it's not just what meets the eye. It's below the surface. So it's about really accepting that there is a huge part of ourselves that has shifted or that we have been given this opportunity to shift. And if we haven't taken it yet, the time is now. The time is now. Because we're about to be like the archer. We're stepping into Sagittarius. We're going to shoot forward. And so all the work that we've done is going to determine how far we'll go. So it's time to play catch up in this in-between stage right now as we're just about to step into this, this new cycle. As we're just now stepping into this new cycle. How can we, just by sitting here and acknowledging this, archetypal theme that's going on that has been going on how can we just by sitting here and thinking about it meditating on it access the opportunity to shift to grow to change to step into a new cycle it could just be a way of thinking it could be one thought program amongst many it doesn't matter the simplest thing can be so profound so how can we right now acknowledge that we are stepping into this new season How can we use that energy to our advantage to shift in a way that is not only for our own highest good, but for the highest good of the one? Take advantage of this opportunity for a new cycle in a huge way. How do you see yourself in that Scorpio energy? How can you look back at this past cycle, this this Scorpio season and say, hmm, how did I or did I not fully take advantage of that opportunity there? To go from the scorpion to the phoenix. Rebirth, the wheel. And the ally as we move through this challenge and forward into the future. I have to say all three of these cards have been coming up for all the personal readings that I've been doing. I do a lot of one-on-one readings, by the way, for anybody who's tuned in and doesn't know that. Um, I've been doing readings for many years and I love what I do. And these three cards... The Six of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Four of Wands has been coming up for everyone. 
because we're all in this together. So this being the ally, I see very clearly a connection to the challenge. It's like, why, why are we going through this rebirth? Why do we ever go through a rebirth? What is it all for? What is it all for? So that we can build a stronger foundation on our spiritual path. So that we can strengthen that foundation and move forward in the best way possible. It's also that we can make our path more sustainable, more sturdy, so that we can really get our roots into not only this earth, not only being grounded in this physical plane, but really having a sense of self in every dimension, on every plane, including the spiritual. Knowing that it's there that our real roots lie. So when we think about this opportunity that we have right now, to shift, to transform, to have a rebirth. Remember what it's really for. It's not so that you can just, you know, you, some women say like you, you cut your hair and it's like you're a whole new person, you know, men too. <laughs> but it's not just because you change your look. It's because something inside of you shifts. The way that you see yourself, your self-reflection shifts. And when the way you look at yourself shifts, the way that you, that you look at the world shifts because everything is a reflection of self. There's only one self. So focus not only on the transformation as it is in this physical dimension, on the material dimension, plane, but what is it for in the spiritual realm? How are we making sure that we are really grounding into our beliefs and our values in a way that serves the highest good. And a hidden fear, the Empress. The Empress is right after number two. Okay, there's a, it's a sequence. This is how the deck works. So right after the two, what is two? The High Priestess. She is the ruler of the subconscious. And once we get clear inside and with our subconscious mind we can then bring that into our conscious reality into manifestation and that's what she represents that's what the empress represents so perhaps we're afraid that we didn't dig deep enough this scorpio season we maybe miss something that's hiding there will i really be able to move forward and manifest the life that i really want if I missed a part of the work that I was supposed to do. These are all having to do with this hidden fear of the individual and collective right now. So a way that we can transform the fear into a positive mantra could look something like this. Okay, so the fear looks like this. I'm afraid that I won't be able to manifest the life of my dreams. I'm afraid I won't be able to manifest abundance. I'm afraid there's something hidden in my subconscious that I didn't quite access. And that thing is going to block me. It's going to limit me from manifesting my fullest abundance. I'm not going to be able to move forward with a feeling and a vision of true beauty. And the positive side would look like this. I absolutely have access to everything that is within me. Everything that I manifest outside of myself is coming from inside of me. Everything on the outside is a reflection of what is on the inside. Abundance is my birthright. All these things will feel really good right now. If you just try it, if you just say that, it seems so simple. But it's because we're bypassing all of the complicated thoughts of the subconscious mind, not only of the individual mind, but of the collective mind when we say these things. So you really have, have to feel to understand what I'm saying here. You really have to feel it. It feels good. It feels particularly good right now to say those mantras that reflect the positive side of this card because it's, it's, it's relative right now. Don't try to rationalize it. Feel and say with me, abundance is my birthright. I'm confident in the reality I see around me. 
I know why and how it was manifested because I see how it relates to my inner world. I know my inner world. I understand my inner world. And so therefore, whatever is outside of me, seemingly outside of me, I know where that's coming from. So we have a three, a four, a six. I like those numbers. Three, a four, a six, and the Wheel of Fortune. Super powerful reading. So just to sum it up, what we're leaving behind is cutting corners to get to our success. We're going to be, from here on out, what we learned is that we're going to have to be giving this life experience our all, our fullest. We're going to be impeccable with our word, right? Four agreements. We're not going to make assumptions. I'm going to do my best, right? That's what real success is about. So although I may have attained success in this way or that, I may have manifested what I wanted and thought I've, I've been, I had been victorious and successful. I understand that the more I give my heart to what I'm doing, the more I am present with what I am doing, the more I give of my highest self to every project that I take on, the greater the results will be, the greater the harvest, the fruits will be. I'm fully acknowledging now that this whole cycle has been about diving to the depths so that now I can rise like the phoenix. I know that I've had the opportunity this past cycle to really transform. And now is my chance to acknowledge that fully and access that opportunity fully and step into a new cycle. I'm doing this not just for the highest good of myself, but for the highest good of one and all. I'm doing this to ensure that our future as one is successful, not just on the material plane, but in every dimension, especially the spiritual, where our roots lie. I may have had a fear that I wouldn't be able to manifest abundance, but I remembered that it's my birthright. And I remember that it's silly to not acknowledge this birthright, that it's waiting for me to access it. I did the work this season, and what I didn't do, I'm doing now, I'm doing today, and I'm using this new moon, new cycle energy to fully acknowledge that which I may not have seen or may not have been willing to see fully. And in doing so, I get very clear with what's going on inside of myself so that whatever I manifest on the outside, I am confident in. Abundance is our birthright. Happy new moon. Whew, feeling Sagittarius, feeling the fires, the adventure, new beginning. Ready to take a leap, a quantum leap forward. <laughs> Namaste. Shalom, aloha, shalom, ha. I'll see you guys next week for the first quarter reading. Peace.